What's up gardeners, welcome to Cross Gardening. Two weeks ago I did a video about pumpkin and how you go and hand pollinate your pumpkin and how you can distinguish between a female flower and a male flower on your pumpkin plant. And I thought, why not making a bit of a longer video about the anatomy of a pumpkin. So this is it, this is the video. I hope you're excited, I'm excited to pass on to you the knowledge that I got looking at what's the anatomy of a pumpkin. So let's go into the garden and we'll look at it together. was a seed. Now all pumpkin seeds look similar. Some of them are bigger than others, some of them are smaller, some of them are lighter color, some of them are a darker color and this is all really depending on the variety and when you actually got your seeds from as well. But really what you can see when you look at a seed, the first thing you see is the seed coat and this is the outer shell of the seed and it helps protect the nut, also called the seed germ, from where the plant is actually going to grow. Now when you go and plant this seed and you water it, the water goes and penetrates that coat to be able to add moisture and also let the temperature as well create this environment to trigger the seed germ to go and eventually grow into a pumpkin plant. And when it starts growing, the seed starts to shoot a sprout up at the surface of the soil and have some roots below the soil. Now this root system, and I'm not going to pick up my plant to show you how big it is, but you got to trust me here, right? It can go quite deep. It can go to one meter deep, maybe even more than one meter deep. And depending on the variety and the environment that you're giving it, it can easily go two meters wide as well. So you want to make sure that you space your plant appropriately. You probably want to plant your big pumpkin varieties at least one to two meters apart. Now, of course, for your smaller varieties, you probably don't need as much space between the plant, but you still need to space them accordingly. But if you don't know what uh, spacing you need to have for this specific variety, usually on the seed package, you would have all directions on how to actually go and plant it. Now, once this plant starts to grow and you've got some roots, you don't want to go and disturb those roots anymore. Even if it's to amend the soil, if you need to add some compost to it just put it on top of the soil because if you damage those roots it's going to go and impact your food production now these roots are really responsible to take up all that nutrients and all that water that the plant is going to need to survive throughout its life and also produce all those fruits as well and i can tell you a pumpkin plant is really hungry so you do not want to touch those roots and giving it a bit of time has grown a fair bit you get your vine and the vine is this particular kind of stem that is long and slender, more or less flexible as well, that you either on the ground or it will climb over things like potentially a trellis, right? Or any structure that you may have around. Now, question that a lot of people have is, can I grow a pumpkin over a trellis? Yes, you can, depending on the variety of pumpkin that you got. For the small pumpkin varieties like the Jack Little, of course, you can grow that over a vine without any issues. But once the fruit gets quite big on other varieties, is you want to add some support for that fruit so that it doesn't actually just hangs in the air and go and snap off the stem and your vine, basically, right? And other varieties that are way too big, you definitely do not want to grow, grow that over a trellis. Uh, now, the vine can grow extremely long. And often from the root, from the base of the plant, you would have multiple vines growing in different directions and potentially you're going to have two or three vines and they may get in the way so here's the, the number one tip for you is that like i said those vines are quite flexible so you can actually get some sticks and really direct the vine to grow in the direction that you want it that is out of the way when you're trying to work in your garden as well now on those vines you probably noticed if you try to touch it it can be quite rough or prickly and so you got some prickly hairs on there those are your friends they detest some of the pests. And here's another tip for you as well, by the way. Anywhere on the vine where there's a leaf node, you can go and bury that leaf node. The leaf node, by the way, is where you got the leaf coming out of the vine. And you see this like a node that you got on the vine, right? And you got that all along the vine. If you go and bury that part of the vine in the ground, it will actually grow, grow some roots into the ground. And this will help in anchoring your plant 
to the ground so that on windy days your plant doesn't end up flying off but it also allows your vine to go and get nutrients from a different location as well because like i said the pumpkin plant is really really hungry so the more uh, places the pumpkin plant can get nutrients from the better your plant is going to be it's going to be happier with you and it's really going to reward you with some really good produce as well now check out those leaves they are huge those leaves like most plants they are there for photosynthesis right so that the plant can get the energy from the sun to be able to take up all that nutrients from the ground but also on a pumpkin it actually helps in creating shade for your pumpkin fruits as well so that they don't go and burn in the sun the other thing that they do as well those leaves and why they're so big is that they also help in creating a micro environment for your plants it keeps the moisture in the ground and also it prevents um, the establishment of weeds around your plants your pumpkins they do not like competing with weeds okay so if you see some weeds growing around the vine where the vine has rooted itself you want to take care of those weeds but again just like i said before you want to be really careful because you don't want to disturb those fruits so make sure that you get those those weeds when they're small and not when they have established their roots and you know in the ground really well where you're going to be taking out some of the soil while you take it out and potentially disturbing your pumpkin roots as well now, now often where those leaves come out you're probably going to see a really thin and interesting strand of hair and this is called a tendril now those tendrils they have this growing habit of growing in spiral and as soon as they touch something they grab onto it and they go and spiral out around it so that they can lock themselves on it and the purpose of that is to be able to lock this vine where it is and really anchor that vine so that it doesn't flower off in uh, on a windy day just like the roots do as well right and once those plants are ready you will be blessed with yellow flowers they are so pretty and this is really one of the best thing about pumpkin plant is the flowers that they grow as well now there's two kind of flowers there's a male flower and there's a female flower as well and here is a male flower you can recognize it with that single stem that yellow stem that you have in the middle of the flower it's full of pollen and the real name for it is actually an anther okay and here you got a female flower and you can recognize it by the complexity of the stigma here and also at the back of it there's an ovary which is a little pumpkin baby waiting to be pollinated okay now the male flower will most likely come out first so that they can start to attract your pollinators before the female flowers are ready to come out not that the female flowers they come about two weeks following the, the male flower and they are open only for a day so they all usually open up early in the morning and they close out in the afternoon sometime in the afternoon so you really have a small window of opportunity if you want to go and hand pollinate uh, those uh, flowers and to have more pumpkin right and if you want to know how to hand pollinate your pumpkin I do have a video that I pre uh, previously uploaded to this channel so you got the link up here feel free to go and check out this video as well once you successfully pollinated your flowers very quickly you would have that pumpkin that will grow quite big you can see here i only pollinated those flowers about two or three weeks ago and look how big this fruit already is and on that fruit you will see there's you know it's attached to the vine right with this stem here people often call this a handle it is not a handle once your fruit is ready and you will know that once this thing actually turns hard and brown and the skin of your pumpkin when you try to push your nail into it doesn't actually leave a trace on it right this is when you know that your pumpkin is ready and it would be a really really bad idea to actually pick up your pumpkin from this stem by the way this stem is called a peduncle and this stem may very likely break under the weight of the pumpkin if you try to pick it up now just so you know aesthetically beautifully speaking i can't say that word beautifully speaking it's quite beautiful to actually go and see this pumpkin with this stem coming out but functionally once you disconnect the plant 
from the fruit that fruit now you picked it and it's inside your house and it's not connected to the vine anymore it has no function okay this is kind of like the umbilical cord this is where the plant feeds the pumpkin from but once you disconnect it there's nothing feeding the pumpkin through that stem for through that peduncle anymore so really there's no point of keeping it but if you like to have a nice view where you store your pumpkin it's always a nice idea to actually keep that peduncle connected to the pumpkin that you store it okay so there you have it your one-on-one -on -one introduction to a pumpkin anatomy of course there's a lot more to know about pumpkin plants and pumpkin fruit and how you grow it but i hope that's piqued your interest now and now you can go to a party and talk to your friend about everything that you know about pumpkin and impress them a little bit right but if you want to know more and dig more i invite you to go on google or to go on youtube and you'll find a lot of content that dig a little bit deeper into the pumpkin pumpkin plant and also if you can just go and add a comment at the bottom of this video as well so that i can know what you learned from this video and if you did like this video just hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet i highly recommend that you do and that you also enable the notification onto this channel why so that you can be one of the first person to know each time that i post a new video to this channel so thank you so much for being with me and watching this video with me and remember it's never been a better time to become a gardener so please join me to create a world where we are more connected to our mother nature.